Welcome back to Blend Six of Noting. This episode, I want to continue with my study with shortest edge node in geometry node. So somebody out there might already figure figure out how to use this um, shortest edges um, node, but I'm trying to figure this out uh, myself. Uh, this is the setup I got so far. So we have three different objects here. Suzanne head box and the uh, the torus, and each one of them have the seed value that I can randomize. So let me try to give a breakdown of what's going on. So first of all, each one of them is turned into some kind of volume, and I like, I really quite like this uh, triangulated uh, result for each of the, of the objects. So I turn it into uh, mesh volume and then I merge by distance so each one of them is triangulated um, yeah and the next thing I did was to use the the curve edge path to curve uh, node here and this guy is also getting this help from shortest edge path and trying to get the shortest path. Okay, sometimes they're kind of failing. It's it's depending on the end vertex. So it, <clears throat> this node has a lot of things going on. So sometimes I don't quite understand it. Um, but let's take a look. So, okay, as you can see here, if we are using the index and we compare it with a value so it's kind of like picking uh, one index value we can sort of give uh, the starting vertices and then from that index it's gonna try to find uh, the path uh, that is shortest and turning it into a curve okay um, and we can actually control um, the edge cost so I think this is something you need to play around with I think you can get like super long path or really short one so it, it's almost like a like a like a tree roots or branching and it's, it's trying to find the shortest or the longest path um, at least that's what I understand So, if we actually didn't specify the start for the, for the sys, it's gonna try to calculate everything. And if I didn't give the end for the stack, for text, it's gonna. Oh, okay. It's doing nothing. It's, in this case, I'm just gonna give it a value. maybe for the start for the sys if i just plug it in so it's it's easier to understand if we actually use um, equal so using integer and then equal to a value as i scrub over this mesh so each mesh have different uh, index and number of vertices maybe so sometimes it goes over so we don't have any result but we can pick a starting index if we want to otherwise we just let it run on every vertices or every index and then we can kind of get the we we try to get the the index of other points that we want to that we want this starting vertices to to meet okay so yeah as a result we're gonna get curves and multiple curves in this case i have uh, i have processed the curve um, in such a way so you can clearly see what's going on so there's a 
there's a starting index and then the curve will end will end up somewhere and based on the total cost it's gonna try to calculate the shortest path um, I have this trimmer trimmer curve so we can animate the curve based on the factor and length maybe for now we just have it like that um, and then I also have this set curve radius so we can control the radius you can actually animate this as well so based on the spline factor between 0 and 1 it's gonna try to influence the the radius of the of the curve along this mesh okay you can actually un get rid of this just give it a value of radius so it's gonna have the same radius if that's what you want and you can have it filled or not filled and you can also remesh this if you want to get like a kind of like a brain pattern you might have seen similar add-on um, maybe from Elfnor or uh, Beast Blind I, I forgot the name but it's kind of doing the same thing there's also like uh, there's also an add-on here uh, I forgot the name that's basically yeah finding it's like a like a branching like a vine you know it's like going across the mesh so you can change the topology of the objects and it's gonna try to find the shortest edge path okay so if you really want to you can also try using dual mesh but it might it might fail okay so it's gonna give a different pattern this is uh, optional but you start with the mesh anyway and and have some kind of pattern and then you you specify uh, shortest edge path that you want I'm still I'm still wondering how to how we can actually start from one point and then from that single point we have like multiple paths I will have to check with other blender artists but this is what I understand so far so hopefully you can try yourself and try to kind of dissect and see what's going on here if you go here uh, if you if the number of vertices or index you specify goes over it disappear because it doesn't make sense to calculate for the algorithm so you might want to have like a like a boundary or something mesh boundary I sometimes I forgot the name there's one of this that one of the utilities that can find the boundary or the the largest number of vertices so you, you might want to plug that in here so it definitely needs some kind of and vertices and the starting vertices it's optional you can use uh, less than or equal so it's gonna try to in this case it's gonna try using the index that's less than this value and then compare it with index that's greater than this value and then try to connect the two based on this cost the cost of the the path from one point to another and it's doing everything all at once um, anyhow that's pretty much how I understand it maybe in the next video I'll talk about this again and we find another use of this edge path to curve I think if you check on Twitter there's a celestial maze 
Um, I think he or she did a setup that's taking advantage of this Cirrus Edge path. And yeah, there's a really cool result that looks like a like a mimics characters. All right. So anyway, thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.